Well, as we know, today is a day many of us really here at Local 4 have been dreading a bit, even as we wish Paul Gross nothing but the best in his retirement. He was here when I arrived at Local 4 long ago. In fact, he had already been here more than a decade by then. And in those many years, it is almost impossible to calculate the contributions Paul has made to us, to WDIV, and to you. The key to the high is the wind flow around. Remember, I keep telling you, winds flow in a clockwise direction around the high. Now today, Mark we Twain said everyone talks about the weather, but no one does anything about it. Perhaps true, but few people have done more about trying to manage it or coexist with it than Paul Gross. Then for the afternoon hours, there's a big game in Ann Arbor. I'm going to be there, and it better not rain or I'll be upset. Forty years ago, Paul Gross was a student at the University of Michigan. And while his classmates might walk to Cottage Inn for their part-time job, Paul was driving east for his to the studios of WDIV. And when he got out of school, he just kept working for extra credit. For a while, he worked seven days a week, splitting his time between three different television stations. In fact, one day, he did the weather on one Detroit station and then drove across town and did it on another. In case you're joining us, Paul Gross has joined us on Mondays and Tuesdays as our weather forecaster. He's worked behind the scenes here for quite some time. And Paul, it's a pleasure to have you aboard. Very happy to be here. I, wish I can't imagine a better way of describing the demand for Paul's talents. But Paul is more than the guy at the maps. It's been a most remarkable day here in Geneva. The day began with an update on global warming. Paul was talking about climate change long before it was fashionable. In fact, the American Meteorological Society honored him for his ability to cover climate change without infecting it with politics. That's not easy. Geneva, Paris, Paul traveled everywhere to learn and share. He is a sponge. In fact, if you've got six or seven hours on your hands, just ask Paul about the impact of weather on, say, human warfare. The biggest obstacle facing the Nazis, however, was tremendous Allied air superiority. And the only way they could protect their troops was by grounding the Allied Air Force with an extended period of bad weather. Paul's documentary on the critical role of weather and weather forecasting on the D-Day invasion of 1944 is one of the crowning achievements of his career and you can find it at the Dwight D. Eisenhower Presidential Library. I mean, it's not inconceivable that, you know, the temperature... Even when you weren't seeing Paul on the air, he was always an integral part of the forecast. We like to joke that he was Gilligan to Chuck Gaedeka's skipper, but they were more like a marriage than office mates. Just like hanging out with a good friend for that long or being married to my spouse, Susan, Paul could finish my sentences. And I would walk in and say something like, you know, next Monday, we'd better watch out for a big, and he'd say, snowstorm? I'd say, yeah. Also off the air, Paul was the go-to guy for the Detroit Tigers. Comerica Park's groundskeeper, Heather Dombosny, keeps Paul on speed dial. And maybe it goes back to that day that young Paul learned that the red spot on Jupiter is a massive storm larger than planet Earth. But Paul's scientific passions went well above our cloud cover. Celestial events thrill Paul to no end, and that has been most infectious. Chances are he's had you crawling outside in your pajamas at 4 a.m. to stare up at a rare alignment of planets or a showy meteor shower. Some scientists, in fact, believe that Titan resembles ancient Earth more than present-day Earth does. And we're fairly certain that Paul has interviewed more astronauts, astronomers, and space researchers than just about anyone. Well, anyone down here, anyway. What we'll miss, what I imagine you'll miss, is Paul's passion for teaching. Now, admittedly, sometimes as students, we're a little clueless, right, Steve? You always had a way of taking the most complicated information and making it simple enough that even I could understand it. I never cared about dew point until you explained it. But that never slowed Paul down or knocked him off his mission. It is a mission with a legacy. The next time your kids come home and tell you about the tornado drill that they had at school that day, just know that that's the result of the gross weather bill. John English signed it into law in 1998 after Paul lobbied Lansing to take up the safety of Michigan's children. That is a real legacy. And that's why he's deserving of one himself. And for that reason, Paul Gross today becomes WDIV's first ever meteorologist emeritus.